my, I'm feeling great. Give me the mic. My tipsy mother-in-law snatched the microphone from my friend during her speech, and I unexpectedly started her own. My father-in-law Mark was drunkenly making a scene with his relatives, and to top it off, Ingrid gave a speech that mockingly targeted me. What did I ever do to deserve this? Why do I have to endure all this? I almost burst into tears when my niece's comment dramatically changed the atmosphere of the room. My name is Naomi, a 48-year-old who's put on quite a bit of weight, tagging along with my food-loving husband Trevor. The infuriating part was that he shed weight effortlessly with just a bit of exercise. Jealous? Now I can eat even more. It made me so mad. I thought about swapping his dinners with Lord for a week. Ah, oh, I love him, but right now I hate his metabolism. Determined to slim down and make him fall for me all over again, I find myself still enjoying delicious meals. Oh well, I married Trevor a year younger than me five years ago. We hit it off quickly. Moving from dating to marriage in no time, but then the real challenge began. When we went to announce our marriage, my mother-in-law complained, "Why marry someone older who can't even have kids?" And my father-in-law let out a disappointed sigh. "Wished for a younger bride." They were rude from the get-go. Trevor warned me his home was like a den of evil. His mom was always harsh on his girlfriend, driving away a past partner he could have married. His dad, a womanizer who had multiple affairs, showed no interest in his wife. Their marriage was rocky, to say the least. His dad's wish for a younger bride was probably to have some eye candy at home. Despite their strong opposition, Trevor suggested we marry without their approval. But I couldn't just do that. I visited his parents multiple times to get their blessing. I loved him, and naturally wanted to get along with his family. We didn't want to marry with them opposed to it. Finally, they accepted our marriage, and we registered our union. One day, my mother-in-law Ingrid said something chilling. I was always bullied by my mother-in-law. So I decided I'd bully my son's wife. Her casual demeanor as she said this sent shivers down my spine. It was never about the age difference. She just wanted someone to bully. No wonder Trevor's previous girlfriends were mistreated for no reason. I decided to keep a safe distance, but then she interfered with our wedding planning, insisting on including her opinions. Why should they have a say? They are not even contributing financially. I thought. However, friends who were already married told me they also consider their in-laws' opinions. It seemed like a common practice to respect the spouse's parents to some extent. I mean, I get it, kinda. It's a big day for their beloved son. Trevor says I could ignore them, but I couldn't just do that. So reluctantly, I agreed to at least listen to them, but I soon regretted my decision. They complained our chosen venue was too expensive, pushing for a place run by a friend of my mother-in-law, a shabby place with bad reviews. Trevor firmly rejected it, but then they started commenting on the bride's attire, demanding it be cheaper. Ingrid even said. I could use her old wedding dress to save money, claiming it would be a waste to spend on something new, as if I'd wear something that's probably covered in cobwebs from sitting around for years. I knew she was just didn't want the bride to be the center of attention, so I flat out refused. She kept making all sorts of suggestions, but I knew our wedding would be a disaster if I agreed to any of them. It was a parade of ridiculous proposals, so I ended up rejecting almost all of them. Looking back, maybe that ignited her mean streak even more. 
right up until the last minute. She was like, have a destination wedding so we can travel. Or, if you don't listen to me, I w a n t attend. Despite all that, Trevor and I somehow managed to get to our wedding day. Then, on the day of the wedding, Ingrid showed up in a funeral dress, not a formal black suit, but something that looked unmistakably like mourning attire. It felt like she was saying she didn't recognize our wedding. Two weeks before, she'd said, I'm not going to your wedding. So I told her, Then please don't come. Maybe that rubbed her the wrong way. She didn't even show up in the dressing room. And suddenly she was sitting with our relatives. It was too late to ask her to leave without ruining the mood of the venue. But to anyone watching, it was clear that the bride and mother in law weren't getting along. My friends and relatives all looked troubled. As the wedding ceremony went on, the groom's relatives started acting up. They were completely drunk, heckling during the movie my husband's friend had made. Of course, we asked the staff to escort that relative out, but even my father in law was smashed, waving around a bottle of liquor brought by the relatives as if it were a flashlight. He even shouted, Hey, waiter, another beer! As if we were in a bar. Some were escorted out, saying they felt sick. The staff did their best to keep the ceremony going. But my guests were all horrified by the chaos. Embarrassed, my husband and I spent most of the ceremony with our heads down. It was a nightmare. Then, during my friend's speech as a representative of my friends, the unexpected happened. My tipsy mother in law suddenly said, Oh my, I'm feeling great. Give me the mic. And snatched it from my friend. Now, let me, the groom's mother, say a few words. Trevor and I were stunned. She was so natural in her movements that even the staff were confused, wondering if this was part of the program. So, about Naomi. I heard she's been a hard worker since she was little. Surprisingly, her comments weren't bad. I didn't want to make a scene by cutting her off if she wasn't saying anything harmful. Maybe it was better to act as if this was planned all along. The staff and Trevor asked if we should stop her, but I decided to see how it went. She lost her father when she was young, then her mother and her sister, who was 10 years older, raised her. That sister passed away recently from illness. Naomi is a remarkable woman who has experienced hardships unimaginable to my son. Her speech wasn't bad for a while. She acknowledged my difficult life, including my parent passing, and how I managed to go to college with support from my family and sister. It was a heavy topic for a wedding, but all true. Just when I thought she might have a good side, about 30 minutes in, she said, But don't you think her parents and sister dying young is because she's a jinx? I was shocked to hear this when they came for the wedding greeting. Maybe she's just an attention seeker bragging about her hardships. She probably doesn't realize we are not interested in such stories. Everyone, not just me, was dumbfounded by her laughter and words. The shock was amplified because everyone had been drawn into my past. Only to be mocked by her sudden turnaround. All she did was expose and ridicule my painful past in front of everyone. During the wedding greeting, I had to talk about my family because I couldn't hide the fact that my parents weren't around. I never intended it to be a soap story. If it were possible, I'd still want to meet my living family members. Why would I ever boast about being unfortunate? I knew it would ruin my bridal makeup, but I couldn't help it. Tears started to fall. Then, in the dead silence of the hall, my niece Erica, a sophomore in high school, spoke up loudly. 
Ingrid, thinking her speech was well received, was smugly saying, "Glad you all enjoyed it." But then, Erica stood up and said, "No, no, you've got it all wrong, old lady. You are here talking about Naomi's misfortunes. But what's your point? Look at this awkward atmosphere. Who are you calling old lady? I'm the mother of the groom." You are so disrespectful," Ingrid retorted, clearly outraged. Erica snorted. "Who's the disrespectful one? You come to a wedding in funeral clothes and try to make a mockery of the bride, when nobody's laughing. So you're just embarrassing yourself. Not only are you disrespectful, but you can't even read the room. Aren't you ashamed?" Even a young girl like me can see how embarrassing this situation is. Maybe with age, you regressed a bit. She raised her hands and shrugged her shoulders as my mother-in-law's face turned beet red. Oh my gosh! Unbelievable! How dare you talk to me like that, Naomi? Doesn't your niece know how to speak to her elders? She snapped, glaring at me. I have to say, my niece is right. Your speech wasn't even part of the program, and instead of bringing some cheer, you interrupted my friend's speech with your boring talk. It's just unpleasant. Yo, mom, I don't know if you were trying to pick on Naomi or what, but can't you see everyone's just appalled? Right now, you're not just picking on her, like Erica said. You're just being a boring, senseless person. Her face went from red to tomato red, as if it could get any redder. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Unaffing believable! I'm your mother, Trevor. How dare you embarrass me like this in front of everyone? It just seems like you brought this embarrassment on yourself. Erica chimed in without missing a beat. While the groom's side of the family was too drunk to notice, my guests began to chuckle. You know what? I thought I'd respect my elder and stay quiet, but since you asked, old lady, Erica said, suddenly smiling innocently. Ingrid looked puzzled. That dress you are wearing still has the price tag on it. What? My mother-in-law gasped as the hall erupted in laughter. It seemed everyone had noticed the tag. No one from her side pointed out, probably because they were mostly men and not interested in her dress. No one had bothered to tell her. Wearing a funeral dress to a wedding with a tag still on? Are you getting ready for the next world? You are well prepared, as expected from an elder. But isn't that a bit premature? People like you tend to live long lives. Erica said, laughing gently. My mother-in-law finally seems to feel embarrassed, and frantically tried to hide the tag. My father-in-law, seeing this, pointed at her and laughed. Oh, you are ready to kick the bucket already! Ha ha ha! My husband and I, and probably most of the guests, could see her anger, but he and everyone else on his side remained oblivious. Well, I guess I will find a new wife then," he joked, and a relative chimed in. "What about Nancy, the hostess?" "That's right, that's right," he agreed, and then all got carried away, completely forgetting about Ingrid. "You too? This is unbelievable! Having fun at my expense in a place like this?" Just when I thought she was about to explode, she grabbed a beer bottle from a nearby table and marched towards her husband. Bottle raised high, declaring, "I won't forgive you!" He turned pale at the sight. Everyone thought we were on the brink of a police-worthy disaster when suddenly my niece Erica dashed over and drenched them both with the table's alcohol. "Cool off with this!" Are you still planning to cause a scene at people's wedding? Staff, please escort these people out. 
The crowd, initially stunned by the unfolding chaos, snapped back to reality at her command, and the staff quickly restrained them. When they asked if they should escort my in-laws out, both my husband and I smiled and said, Please do. Our wedding ended amidst this commotion, but later, my brother-in-law, who's been like a father to me since my sister passed away, joined us to confront my in-laws. He was especially furious about the wedding fiasco and determined to make them pay for the expenses. Initially, they tried to shrug it off, saying they were drunk or it wasn't right to settle it with money. However, when my brother-in-law, a former boxer, and so muscular grabbed Mark by the collar, he quickly agreed to pay. He must have been really scared, as he paid the full wedding cost in cash that very day. At the same time, my husband declared we were cutting ties with them. He apologized, saying he should have done this sooner, but I couldn't blame him. I was wrong to even momentarily hope for a pleasant speech from her. I want us to become a stronger couple by overcoming these hardships, I thought. Later, we heard that my father-in-law became wheelchair-bound, and my mother-in-law suffering from rheumatoid arthritis reached out for help. But my husband ignored her plea, saying, They are not my parents anymore. I recently passed by their old house, now demolished. Maybe they are in a facility, but I doubt they have the funds for both. Perhaps Ingrid is living somewhere like a park. I thought I saw someone like her there recently. But they are strangers to us now. Unlikely we'll ever meet again. As for us, we are living our lives peacefully. Two years later, we used our refunded wedding money and our savings to have a wedding ceremony in an Italian chapel and a belated honeymoon. It was a redo of our wedding. We didn't invite anyone from my husband's side, but my friends and family came, making it a beautiful ceremony. Erica said she was glad our wedding didn't end on a sour note and gave us an expensive gift and a caricature she drew of us, showcasing her art school skills. I feel bad accepting such a pricey gift, but she said, I see you more as my real sister, so please accept it. How sweet of her. When she gets married, I will repay her kindness three or four fold, maybe with some furniture. Wearing a wedding dress again at my age was a little embarrassing, but my husband said I looked even more beautiful than before. I had a bridal spa treatment but I'm sure I haven't changed that much. He's just being kind. However, after the ceremony, we loosened up and indulged in his loveful buffets. And at 48, I've gained weight quickly. My husband joked, You've changed. How about going back to the old you? I snapped back, Hush, you are thinning on top, you know? That's our way of teasing each other. We hope to be a couple that can always poke fun at each other, just like best friends. Since it was a late marriage, I want to lose weight to live long and healthy with my husband. Health is important after all. Now, off for a walk with my husband today. <laughs>